together again after being separated while rally across the Atlantic. If you missed the last few episodes, I'll link them up here. We're sailing from Antigua to Barbuda right now for a bit of a birthday party. But we also want to go free diving and spear fishing because this island is insane. The water's so clear. Pretty dang it's up. I'm Elena and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last six years now, and recently, it's like we're seeing everything for the first time through a new set of eyes. This is our little boy, Lenny. Click the subscribe button to join our voyage every Monday. This really is our most comfortable shirt. You buy this for sure, but this is a tri-blend something or other. I, I Googled it the other day because this seriously is the most comfortable shirt. Anyway, head to our website and find out what the tri-blend blend is. And yeah, I mean, you can just zip down to your store and get yourself one of them. If you don't want a sailing with everyone. If you don't want a sailing with everyone. One. But seriously guys, if you do want to pick up some SLV merch, now's your chance. Head over to shop-lavagabond.com. Thank you. Now Riley, could you please tell us all about preparing for a sail? So getting ready, we get the boat, Mickey Mouse, get everything that could smash low. You just be sensible, you just put everything away as much as you can. I've just replaced both elbow bends, finally. How did he clean the insides? He didn't ask. We haven't even had time. No, Mel ask. was a legend. No, yeah. and, and we've also been socialising a lot, which is something different for us. So we've been squeezing all these jobs in, in between actual social engagements. Yeah, I feel like a man about town. No, I know everyone. It's crazy. If you missed the last episode, our port engine wasn't spitting out water due to the build-up inside of the elbow bends. I chiseled away its insides and did as much as I could before finding Mel, the mechanic, who used, I think, probably a Dremel tool to get it all out. Once I put it all back together, I'd fire it up and we'd be on our way over to Barbuda. Listen to those. I've still got them both disassembled. Actually, no, you put your bed back together. But th this one here to check for any leaks or anything because it's a pretty, I mean, yeah, you gotta check, you gotta make sure you've done it right. Who's that? We're just letting the anchor dangle because it's got sand all over it. And um, yeah, we're sailing over to Barbuda. It's 20 nautical miles. Oh, we'll have it on a beam, which is really good, but we will be beating into it to begin with to round the bottom of the island. So yeah, should take us five or six hours. down a fair bit so we are going to shake out a reef. Currently we've got 14 knots. Elena rightfully pointed out that we should put a reef in the main. The wind's coming from here so we're on the south end of the island so we're gonna head south east and then tack, and then we should have a beam run all the way to Barbuda. And on a beam, which just means that the wind's on your side and it's a very fast point of sail. So we should hammer straight there. Lenny, say bo bottle da da ta. Bottle da da. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about our plans on the new boat and how we plan to be a lot more organised on the new boat and how in the past we've been really rushed like when we first got this boat when we left the port for our shakedown cruise I didn't even have proper sheets that fit our bed because we had a new employee I was teaching him to edit and I was catching up with the movies and it wasn't my first priority and I want the boat to be my first priority on the new boat. And now I'm gonna have two kids which made me stress and I'm thinking I'll, I'll be gonna have more time for this boat to slow down and do things 
perfectly. So then we're talking about getting help and like one person or two people like a babysitter and a cinematographer. We love having the boat to ourselves too. It's like, it's yeah, so gone. Jack's just left and he was obviously amazing and family, but the second you get your boat back to yourself, it's just, it's different, you know? We're just thinking about the future and how to make it manageable because of the workload and then we want to do things even safer again. We're turning into nerdy old fuddy-duddies, curmudgeons. We're becoming sedulous. We were just speaking about the last three days, which we didn't film much of, but we had both of the aft cabins, the beds were torn apart because we had to get to the engines underneath. Couldn't even walk to the bathroom because the hallways had mattresses in them. Did the water make it? And both engines. And I got some guys to help with the gas bottle because it would have taken us days to find all the little O-rings and the right pipes and everything. Yeah, I was done with, with so that. It was like the busiest three days we've had and I just said to Riley, I don't want to have lots of days like that. I want to enjoy my time out here more. Yeah. So we're trying to think really smart so that we can have that more. So we sort of want someone on board. This isn't a job application thing. What would you do? Were you I, what would you do? Let us know in the comment section below. I'll read through there. And occasionally I find some real nuggets of gold in there. So we left Antigua and we came out, we were beating into it and it was pretty uncomfortable beating into just the Atlantic. All of the trade winds and the wind and waves coming all the way across. So we beat into that, then tack, we went all the way around Antigua. And then as we got past Man of War Point, that's where you can then crack off a bit, increase speed. And uh, because you're not beating into the waves, it's, everything's just a lot more comfortable. So you crack off, ease the sheets, and uh, it's just, there's less pressure, it's more pleasant on board, far more pleasant. So that's been our last four hours. And I'm just constantly amazed that we can move from A to B using Lenny. just the wind. <laughs> Lenny's climbing all over me as I'm trying to- Brenton, stay over there. Okay, so keep going. When you've got a sailboat, you can move places with just the wind. from Antigua to Barbuda right now for a bit of a birthday party and we've got enough champagne and wine on board to sink a ship we made the bad decision of offering a hull. of offering our friends if they needed us to carry anything over we have a full sail locker full of kite surfing gear surfboards and then the inside's got so much alcohol it's hilarious these we're... guys are great though they've all got kids Lenny's age which means that we're just immediately all best friends yeah <laughs> Uh, no, they really took us under their wing when we arrived in Antigua. It's perfect, that's why we're sailing to Barbuda mostly, but we also want to go free diving and spear fishing because this island is insane. The water's so clear. Pretty dang it's up. You got Vicky? Can mama have one? <laughs> oh, thanks, baby boy. Just one. Yeah, yeah. It was this time of night, we had that sunset, and if the sky goes pink, I'm gonna be very, very disturbed. This is like... No, no further. Hang out here with mum, mate. Remember what we said about not dying, Lenny?
There is reef in there and reef up where we're going. It's all out of the way, but I'm just very, very cautious. I'm looking at the depth. I'm making sure that that corresponds to where the GPS is saying that we are on the map. I'm annoyed that it's so late in the day because it's better to be arriving during the day. I can see other boats there. It is a clear path. As we get closer, I just start, I don't really need to start paying more and more and more attention. So I was like, get Lenny inside, stop him jumping on the tramps and we need to really start paying attention here. Cheers. Now, Mr. Bubble and Squeak, enlighten me. Well, I'm just speaking to a lady called Make, and she's helping us with the visa ban that I received at the Brussels airport because we overstayed our visa by a month without permission. We had two visa extensions in the Azores, but they were only verbal, which I find very strange. <laughs> they gave us no written permission, but they were like, here's another three months. You guys saw a video of us when we were in Madeira and we're like, we've overstayed our visa. We're in trouble with the cops. They could literally take our boat off us. We could never be allowed back into Europe again. Oh, I love bureaucracy. And then we went to the customs officials and they said, you have till the 30th of blah, blah, blah month. Don't stress, you got another month. We went past the date that there was the blanket visa extension for everyone because of COVID. By a few weeks, we thought we'd be fine, but when Lenny and I flew across to meet Riley in Antigua, when I left Brussels at passport control, the man said, you're here illegally. And I said, yeah, but there was like a blanket you know, COVID extension, he said, this isn't true. Well, that's what we got told. He said, where? And I said, Mandira. And then I also said, well, we got two visa extensions in the Azores. He said, where's evidence of that? And I said, it was verbal. He said, if you can't give me evidence of the visa extension, you've been here illegally for this many months and you're going to get a 10 year ban. And I said, well, you're going to have to give me a 10 year ban. And I was nearly in tears. It sounds like I was all like confident, but I was like, you're going to have to give me a 10 year ban. I don't have that. And he was like shaking his head and writing stuff. And, and I left thinking that Lenny and I had a 10 year ban from Europe and he said if I ever want to come back to Europe I have to go to visit an embassy and anyway we've been talking to a lawyer because you have 30 days to appeal the ban and so we've been talking to lawyers and they've just looked it up and he might not have actually filed it which is amazing but we're also really annoyed because we've had to pay all this money for legal stuff and apparently we're thinking at this stage it was just a threat and he was trying to scare me but I guess it's good news. This Elena, be... that's great news. You're not yeah. banned. Thank you, Marke, for helping us out. <laughs> Obrigado, Marke. The sky was clear and we intended to spend the entire morning on the beach. We'd forgotten how beautiful it was here. Even though the last time we were here was early 2018, only five months after Hurricane Irma hit, and there was debris all along the beach and the town had been flattened. Riley and I, plus some other friends we met on the neighbouring boats, actually spent some time helping clean up the town. We were looking forward to seeing the island again after all this time had passed, although we were in no rush to leave the beach just yet. <laughs> oh, that's a bit big for you. It's perfect. Okay, we just found some reef over there. What are you after today? Do you think you're going to get lucky? I might grab a lobster or... 
Apparently there's mutton snapper here, which would be amazing. We didn't see them last time, did we? No. Nope. I know how to get them now. JC taught me. Now nah, don't let everyone be on. Don't let this be pointless footage of just diving. <laughs> Again. Elena, I'm just happy being wet. Yeah. Lenny? No, the, the coral's really colourful, so that's nice, but not so many fish. And I can tell that when there's a spot which should be good, everyone else here probably knows it's good as well and it's been hit, and it's the it's the ones that are scattered out that are less pilfered. Um, what do you see? I saw two little nass out, but it's not groper season. And actually, I was chasing one with the camera. It went under a ledge, and then I knew there was a lobster there, and it is lobster season, because I heard the groper going, ooh, ooh, ooh. and then the lobster was going, ee, ee, ee. <laughs> and I had a little wrestle and all sand came out. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna get that lobster. But he was in too deep, so yeah. I couldn't get him. And then there was a big squall, and we had to come back, and Elena's annoyed with me because she didn't get to go in. I was waiting for my turn, and then it just never came. <laughs> you were having too much fun, it's all right. You can take me later. We can go all day. All right. Yeah, we'll go later. Did you have fun in the boat? Yeah? <laughs> uh oh. So it's just a good tip. So today it's blowing about 10 knots more than it was yesterday. So I'm going to move 50 metres closer to shore and the wind will just be far more calm and if it was to drop down again I'd move further out again because if there's no wind there's likely to be mosquitoes and stuff like that so we go further out or further in depending on how strong the wind is and just getting in and out of the tender is just that much harder when there's these like even waves like this Elena wants to sing happy birthday to George, but she doesn't want to come in with the camera and the guitar, because she doesn't want everyone to think that she's just singing for the camera. So we have to leave the big camera behind, then I'll come in later and grab the big camera. And because Enoch asked us to film Shaka Kai, because it's his place of business, and he's a nice lad, and we're gonna uh, promote Shaka Kai to cruisers, sailors, to go in there and have a drink, because it's sick. Yeah, we'll tell you the story about it later. We didn't know what to get George for his birthday, and then this morning I was like, maybe I should sing him happy birthday on a guitar. <laughs> So this is Shaka Kai. There's actually a really cool story surrounding this bar involving a man that just emerges from the bushes, a family that met him with the means to help him realize his dream of owning a bar, some legal and bureaucratic nightmares, and in amongst all of that, a wedding. If you'd like to find out more, then probably the best thing that you could do is sail here and ask around for yourself. What's the plan now, Stan? Go back to the 
boat, feed Lenny a bottle, um, <laughs> dehydrate. No. Then go meet everyone at the cottages that they buy down here. Have a delicious dinner and chill and have an awesome time again. Okay, shall we? Is that alright mate? <laughs> Papa? Papa? Bottle? Yeah, let's Papa. go get your bottle. Yeah. Good morning.